you know, of a Sorry to interrupt. I just thought I'd turn on the recorder. Keep going, Klaus. Yeah, you don't assess just the physical reality of a community, but also the political reality, right? Because uh, there, there are ownership questions. You know, what, who, who, have, who is holding what kind of interest in the community and what would it take to sway uh, people to come on board and, and, uh, and change? You know, so I mean, so yeah, no, no, it will require, I mean, we have to build this up. You know, this is, this is still pretty fuzzy uh, in, in uh, how to approach that. So Pete, Stacy asked a question. Um, Klaus, when you go into a community, are there diagnostic questions you ask, like five questions you ask before you go in and start doing any, you know, any action with them? And that's what Klaus was answering. Go back to you, Stacy. So the reason I ask, and this ties into Jerry, what you were saying about mapping, I think this is a great opportunity to engage schools and teachers. Like one of the women on the call mentioned, find people that are doing the work anyway. So I know when I was a teacher, there was nothing that I loved more than going to a science workshop and being given a lesson plan with a whole curriculum to carry out. And then you then you just need facilitators really. And it's I just think it ties in with a lot of these ideas. So that it's was awesome. one. There's also lots of citizen science and student science going on uh, in really, really interesting ways. Some of which is just like, let's go look in the look in the tidal pool and figure out what's crawling around there. Some of which is actually sort of measuring and, and logging and trying to sort of teach scientific principles, methods, techniques and all that. Yeah, and also when a student goes home and says to their parents, mom, is there anything that we don't buy in the supermarket? That could, you don't, you never know what you're going to hit on or who's going to be involved in what. And it's just a way to bridge generations, get a community involved. I just think there's a lot of pluses to use as an alternative, like another approach, a complementary approach, not one or the other, just another thing to consider. And that I'm complete now. Yeah. I mean, there's also the League of Women Voters. I, I made a presentation to them here in Bend super active group and they are in they are partnering in turn with other community organizations so every community like Bentia is is you now very active uh in in this field and very progressive and and i'm sure you now many other communities are but then you know you go to places where there's not much in place and you have to build it you know? so we, we but I like your, your question, you know, there needs to be, you need to have an entry point, basic uh, clip points to ask and you know, to, yeah, this will, this will uh, take some, some push-ups. Before we go too much further into the call, I just wanted to check in, Klaus, so do you have family in the way of the emergencies across the Rhine Valley and all of that? Um, has that? Has that affected you and yours? No, we're out of harm's way and bent for the moment, you know. Uh, yeah, but do you, I mean, do you have, still have family in Germany who might have been affected? Oh, in Germany. Oh, yeah. yeah in Germany. No, my sister lives in Vienna and, and uh, no, they, they are in, in safe places, sort of safe places, but it's it's a catastrophic mess. I mean, it's incomprehensible. Uh, I looked at, uh, at the images there. Uh, the, I mean, Dusseldorf, for example, you know, has the longest bar in the world, they claim, when it's this long road, when every every year. Every single building has a bar at the bottom or a restaurant, and it's completely devastated. I mean, uh, flooded and furniture all over the place. And it's incredible. I mean, that's uh, <clears throat> the Germans are quite, like in deep shock, you know, as to what happened to them here. Yeah. Um, and I just, uh, I read, I read one really nice sort of calm report from somebody who lives in Bonn who said, hey, uh, this was all over the media. Like there were all kinds of warnings. The the forecasts were quite accurate. If you if you looked at the end of the episode at, at what the forecasts were were saying coming in, like the volumes matched. It's just that nobody could imagine the scale of of the flash flooding. Right. And he said a lot of houses that were washed away were 400 to 500 year old houses, which means this hadn't happened in multiple, multiple, multiple generations. This was, this was completely unprecedented. And yeah. if they had spent a bunch of time sandbagging, it probably wouldn't have helped <clears throat> because the volume, uh, the volume of water was just so, so huge. Anyway, 
Yeah, no, we, we lived in Düsseldorf uh, uh, my last five years of work on the on the Rhine River. And I mean, we over our balcony overlooked you know, the, the Rhine River and there was um, maybe half a mile of easement. There was a flood area. So the, the, the city is very sophisticated in the way that they protect themselves from flooding. So in the in the old town, there's like a there, there are gates that are closing you know, uh, to, to, to like a seawall. Yeah. Like a seawall. And they, they, I mean, it's amazing. The steel gates and, and, and that protection. I mean, I, I experienced a couple of floodings there where, where we had actually a guy with a kayak floating by below our balcony, but it, I mean, it was, it's unimaginable that the water would rise so high to breach that. Uh, right. it's, it's, it's stunning. That, that was the problem with Fukushima is that they had seawalls, they had all kinds of things, but nobody had predicted, you know, the, the, the levels. And then they put the, the generators in the basement of the nuclear reactor. And it's like, that didn't go well because the backup generators flooded and were useless. <clears throat> anyway, um, all this makes us rethink a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so we're at, this, this is a build uh, OGM call. And I, like, I've had five conversations in the last two weeks that have kind of blown my brain. Um, so, um, so I just kind of want to check in a little bit with everyone and, and see where we are. Uh, Klaus, it would be nice to process uh, the call we had and to talk about the message you sent out uh, about uh, what, who could fill what roles. Um, um, but let me just sort of check in for a second just to see where everybody, where everybody is. Um, Stacy, you're, you're, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're, you're happy when we're trying to sort things out and figure things out in an OGM-y kind of way. Yes. And that, that has you connecting into some communities you're liking and some activities that might seem to be materializing and so forth. But, but, and, and, and I like that because I, I'm, I'm feeling that from you when you're in, in our conversations and I really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add by means of by way of check-in? Um, I had a nice um, talk with Shimon about his project. I'm interested in that. We're going to meet again next week. And also, class, if I could get the information and just you know listen in on the calls regarding what you're working on, I'm very interested in that. Sure. Cool. Uh, and we've got the recording up uh, for the of the case clinic and all, all of those sorts of things. So we're, we're moving a bit on that. Um, I was Pete, there. Yeah, exa oh, that's right, exactly. Um, Pete, do you wanna check in? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, I, I like that frame. Uh, I'm happy when uh, we have a shared understanding of what we're doing and why we're doing it and what we think we'll accomplish at, at many levels, you know? So even down to, you know, why are we having this call? What are we gonna, what do we think we're gonna do and and what's going to come out of it up to you know a project plan that'll last two weeks to a project plan that'll last two months to two years so i think the project plans like that interlock but but really understanding that one one of the things i i feel like it happens a lot that we don't know why we're doing something and we haven't talked and, and i don't mean the the four of us i mean mm -hmm. you know us in general the collective us all over the world um why are we doing what we're doing and what do we think is going to happen because of it? And have we all come to agreement on that um, so that you don't find yourself doing one thing and the group is doing another thing and you, you know, you're half done with something and you're wondering why you're doing it or you're doing different things and you don't know, you know, why you, you don't know why at the end of it, you didn't accomplish anything or, or whatever. Makes sense. And we're trying to figure out ways to get those plans to link arms and then to be visible down to the task level somehow so that we can kind of sign. And, and I think Stacy, it was you who mentioned, hey, when I have two spare hours and I'd like to donate them somehow to something that makes OGM move forward in some way, where can I find what what thing to apply myself to? That's a that's a great request. Um, so we're kind of aiming toward things like that. Right, Klaus, do you want to check in? Sure, yeah. yeah. So I put a project outline uh, on Mattermost um, to uh, um, you know, see if we, if we really want to launch this thing. Jordan 
uh, called me right after the case clinic and he's uh, totally on fire, um, you know, saying that uh, he could free himself from other commitments and devote, you know, more resources and time to this uh, event here. So we have um, a meeting today, later today with Anne Jordan and I to uh, talk about uh, next uh, steps here. And I would love to get Anne started uh, on uh, developing a project plan uh, and use, use this here. As, and I, I didn't want to put it into any kind of software because I'm not sure what is. I am, I've been out of the field for too long and I'm sure there's new, new uh, stuff out there. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have, I had a, a, a conversation with Samit uh, on, on Friday super talented lady. I mean, she was I mean, great on the call. I mean, working on AI and, and uh, I mean, very high level uh, 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 engagement here. So she is on board. Um, Joshua is a guy who um, uh, has now the Seeds of Tao uh, uh, work, work group in the HERC. Um, he also strikes me as a really bright guy and, and very motivated to uh, advance his concept, you know, and he could actually launch the educational platform that we're looking for because he already has the infrastructure in place for it. Um, so Jordan and I have a meeting with him later in the week um, to see if he could, if, if uh, um, Jordan could pull him into, into his group, into his organization, you know, because that is also a revenue generating potential thing to do, you know, to, uh, offering training classes. Mm -hmm. what, what did it work? What was it? H-E-L-C, you said? G-L-C. Oh, the G-L-C, gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so if, uh, I mean, if you're interested, we could go through, um, uh, a project outline before I, you know, advance it uh, to talk uh, it through with Jordan to make sure you're on board. I mean, is this you know, something you would like to engage with? Because um, this could get really big, really fast, right? I mean, uh, this this uh, um, is a, um, I mean, this is like a real project here. Mm -hmm. Um. And um, I'm, I'm, and I meant to sit down and, and reply to your to your note because you had uh, sent a bunch of uh, a bunch of interesting and useful things about you know who could play what roles and how that all fits. Um, um, so, and I, and I'll just let me just check in for a second because. Um, I, I, a couple of days ago when I was talking to Pete, he said, I, I sort of have shiny object syndrome, which is, which is true. Uh, and I call it squirrel, uh, <laughs> which is things come along and they, they like elaborate what I'm thinking. And suddenly I have a different set of priorities and things move around. And I've had multiple of those kinds of conversations in the last couple of weeks, uh, which got me thinking about uh, constructs that would help OGM kind of uh, show up in the world. Um, and um, the most recent of them was an interesting conversation yesterday with um, Scott Cook, the founder of Intuit and his leadership team about a project that might be super interesting and weirdly super OGME. Um, and could, I don't, and I don't know what it's gonna turn into, but we had a fantastic sort of kickoff call. And on top of the prior calls that have, had explored all sorts of different avenues, like I woke up this morning at 3 a.m. with my head full of like, like answers to questions I was asked on the call yesterday, some of which I answered on the call, but I, they were, it was all starting to materialize. So this morning I got up and I went for a walk at, at uh, 4.30 or something like that and uh, just filled my voice memo with, uh, with a bunch of stuff, which doesn't happen to me very often. So that, that's kind of the place I'm in and trying to figure out, okay, okay, like if, if we actually get sort of energy and funding in here, um, uh, where do we go? Um, so, um, so how about Klaus, if you want to, um, share the project outline with us on screen, 
uh, maybe a good way is for us to, to, to just talk through that and listen to it and see what you're up to uh, yeah. and then uh, see where that goes. Okay, can I, uh, is, that, is that big enough? Can you see that? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, I'm, now, I'm now in process, right? I mean, so I'm thinking uh, linear and, and, and process focused here. So the, the, the first thing we, we would need to do is to develop a flow chart that defines how this organizationally works. So what I, what I envision is you have uh, one spider web off on the community. Um, Klaus, um, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I think maybe a thing to do would be for you to go over this super quick, like in 45 seconds or something like that. Kind of say what you kind of, you know, what you're thinking overall, and then maybe together we can kind of dig into it a little bit more. Like fly over it, fly over it fast once. Got it. So first of all, organizational construct, right? I mean, to develop uh, a flow chart that allows us then to assign functions and core elements to jobs. Then you need a team formation, meaning we need to now assign names to specific functions. Um, I think we need an advisory council and John Ulak and Tim Gieske come to mind because they are uh, uh, really a senior level people. Then we need to get into marketing and communications. We need to set up a website. Um, we need to develop messaging to, to solicit uh, community participation, sponsors, and so on, uh, resource partners. Uh, we need an educational platform, which is what I just mentioned with Joshua, uh, where we would teach, I mean, where we would offer classes you know, for uh, uh, innovations brokers to get launched, uh, give them basic uh, tools to, to work with. Um, then we need to develop a platform that manages innovations brokers in the communities, right? Because uh, so, so I see the community efforts on one stream in the middle is the, you know, is the platform, uh, which would be us. And then there is the outside, the external resources that we are calling on. Once the blueprint is developed, we are basically offering that to external resources. Um, and then we have uh, three offers for prototypes uh, of, of a community innovation brokers. There's Carrie Norton um, and, and Trisha. I had a conversation with her. I'm waiting for her to get back, but she's wrote me a very enthusiastic email. And then uh, Christiana is from Greece, also like you know, super motivated. Um, we need to have mapping tools and software to, uh, to develop a tracking device, you know, which and ultimately produces this blueprint that we have been talking about. Uh, we need to form alliances. Uh, that would be the external to us resource uh, group um, that, will, that uh, we would then connect to communities. Uh, we need to go into funding and as Samit was, was mentioning, go and start with it you know, right away. Uh, so consider engaging a grant writer. You know, we I think we have uh, almost enough together to uh, uh, to develop a proposal that could uh, that if it's if it's resourced properly and I mean on a talent basis uh, could launch us you know, with funding. Uh, consider entering the Elon Musk one hundred billion dollar challenge to sequester for carbon sequestration ideas, and I think there is nothing that beats you know, the, the photosynthesis uh, for, for carbon sequestration. There's nothing out there that compares to it. Uh, so if we can build a credible uh, challenge here, uh, then we could apply you know, to that, uh, to that uh, 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 challenge here. Um, and then you know, project management, what kind of software, and then use a project plan as the key communications tool and then data gathering and processing scaling. So I haven't uh, uh, unfolded that yet. Um, okay. Thank you, that's awesome, Klaus. Great. Um, let me uh, let me share a screen and, and and kind of talk through stuff. Um, if you could, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I just did. Cool. 
Um, uh, so lots of good stuff here, and it's I think it's a good overall uh, outline. Um, I, I also think it looks like somewhere, you know, very roughly somewhere like uh, three months to six months worth of work here. And I can kind of just just see that I would break this out into like, I, I think I could already see like a dozen what I call project plans. So let me talk through a project plan a little bit. Um, so this is uh, this is a template that Jerry and I have been have been working on using and the idea of this plan is to uh, talk through um, what what's needed who's working on it uh, what's the you know what's the how are we how are we getting this done how do we think we're getting this done and then uh, breaking it down into uh, smaller goals and a timeline so this is kind of optimized to, to work on a wiki, um, but it could be adapted to, to any project management tool. Uh, this is some background behind the, the, that form. This is the link that's at the top of the first form. Uh, yes. Um, and I also have to say that because of a missing feature in, in the website software, these links actually don't work right. Oh, so that won't go back to it? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Ah, there we go. <clears throat> um, anyway. Uh, so then I also want to look at another page real quick. And uh, this one is not quite formatted right. So let me switch the formatting. Uh, so there's a this is a, a list I made once of just a bunch of you know basic stuff that you need when you're starting up an organization. Um, so names are really important because you want people to be able to say I work for OGM. Hi, Judy. I, I, Hello. Uh, OGM is a cool thing. Uh, by the way, if you want to check out the OGM website, uh, you need something. You need a, a place to, for people to hang their hang themselves. Basically, work on on you know this is the thing I'm working on. Uh, and as you said, uh, Klaus, a, a website is a good thing. Uh, you need to figure out where you're going to talk. Right now, we're using we're kind of using the one Mattermost channel. We might need a couple Mattermost channels, uh, and I think probably we also need a mailing list uh, because not everybody is going to be in in Mattermost. Uh, and then document uh, document library a place to keep uh, you know all of these kinds of things uh, as you build this, as you build a project plan. It needs to live somewhere. Uh, it also needs uh, something I should add to this list is uh, as you said, Klaus, a project management tool to keep track of stuff. The, the short list for that, I think, is uh, Massive Wiki and Notion and Airtable and maybe Google Docs for a document library. Uh, Massive Wiki can do all of that. Uh, Notion can do all of that. Um, Airtable and Google Docs might be good for, for some overflow kinds of things. Um, and the way um, uh, kind of really roughly, uh, I, I think everybody, everybody has a shiver run down their back when you know when I say massive wiki or Notion or or even Google Docs or something like that. How is that going to work? What do I have to learn to do it? Um, it's going to be a pain. All that kind of stuff. I think the most most people kind of refer to uh, refer to the information. They refer to a document. Uh, they refer to the project plan. They refer to a timeline or something like that. Most people just need to be able to read stuff. Uh, so all of those tools work pretty well. They have affordances for most people to read stuff. And then there's another set of people, a smaller set of people who, who are doing the project management or leading a sub project or, or something like that. Those are the people that really need to dig in and get their hands and feet dirty with, you know, bits and bobs and formatting and links and all that kind of stuff. So most people don't have to learn that. A few people have to have to be able to do it um, with their eyes closed and half asleep. So, um, so what that kind of leads to, uh, all of these tools are good at, at presenting stuff to many people. 
um, all of them have specialist modes for the people actually getting the work done. And then what you do, I think, is you pick the tool that the specialists you've got um, uh, are comfortable with. So the people who are doing project management and the people who have to write plans, they have to be comfortable with the tool. And then you can adapt everything else around that. Um, so uh, that's maybe good enough for now. Um, a thing that I didn't see, Klaus, is kind of a mission and vision um, uh, development. So I think that's really important. Um, and uh, I think you, uh, it's not in this list, I think, because you just know it so well. And you're like, mm -hmm. of course, we're working on the thing that we're working on. Um, but that's something that uh, as you build a team, um, we all, we all, you know, this, this group of folks has heard you speak enough that we kind of know what the mission and vision is. Um, but uh, as the the project grows, um, that's going to be the key thing. You know, uh, I'm, I'm in or out of this project because I believe in uh, the vision and I believe in the mission, how we're doing it. So uh, that's something that we need to, to kind of outline as soon as possible. Um, I kind of wonder, the, the case clinic has been super useful for us. And I also wonder, this to me looks like, I don't, I don't know that I would, well, I guess I don't, I don't understand maybe, it, it would be good to talk a little bit more about what we're trying to accomplish here. My guess is that these folks, we can start doing essentially a mapping project uh, right away. So um, so maybe the case clinic is a way to, to kick off the mapping. Uh, maybe we deconstruct the case clinic a little bit and work it into, um, uh, work it into, into mapping, I don't know. Um, but a, a good thing to do would be to these are these are the right things to do to start to talk to community innovation brokers and and I think the long term thing that we're doing is is mapping. So then um, I think we take tools like the case clinic um, or like roundtables or uh, uh, expert interviews, things like that. We take those those formats, those structures, and we end up building our our own. Uh, template for how we how we uh, uh, meet and essentially recruit uh, uh, innovation community um, uh, and then how we you know how we work with the community to um, uh, identify the, the the various parts of the the pipeline um, and so I, I guess I guess uh, I guess we're going to need more tools besides the case clinic, and we also need to kind of templatize the way that we talk to communities as we go into them and start mapping. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sort of two comments. Uh, one is about the case clinic, which doesn't seem like a well, like it's brought us together. It's convened us into some good conversations. But the process itself doesn't, I don't think it leads to where we're trying to get to. So I'm, I think, uh, as Pete just said, we, we need some other group process tools and not just to go back to case clinic uh, to keep doing that. Because I'm not, I'm not sure it's generative in the way we need it to be uh, here. Uh, then second thought is kind of, as I said, uh, uh, at the end of the previous call about this topic, the mapping thing is a thing all by itself. The mapping thing is pretty huge. And the mapping thing could easily be a contagion vector. Uh, the mapping thing has to do with outreach and with marketing and with a bunch of other things because there's data available already without our having to do anything. We just tap into it about every community on the planet. That There's just data that exists already. Awesome. Great. Then what do you layer onto it? How do you get people to DIY some data for their own communities? How do you leave tools for them? And is that, is that the introduction for uh, bringing in an innovation broker, right? Uh, that that hey now that you now that you see what's around, having followed our do it yourself steps, here's what you could do. But but and that's just one way that this could work. Uh, but I think without understanding what we mean by mapping and what how the different how mapping could play out and all that, um, we don't know what role it plays in the whole uh, citizen experience here. I guess. Uh, and then you have um, on one of the items you have uh, the GRC uh, as a sort of a source for how to do some of this kind of stuff. I, I see the GRC as a great community of interested people, as a recruiting ground for people who might be interesting in participating in this project, 
but not as a ground for standing up a business or starting a, a GRC is not equipped and I don't know that it's that interested in doing formal projects. Yeah, um, no, I agree. And, okay, and Jordan okay. had that same impression. Yeah. Good, because I because I was getting the impression you thought GRC was more than that. And I don't I don't I don't think it is. Yeah, no. Um yeah, I don't know that uh, they have uh, shown no indication that they would be interested to really launch this. Yeah. And I know, like, I go, I go way far back with David Hodgson uh, and Dave Witzel. Like, I know them, I've known them for a very long time and love them both dearly, but they're sort of connectors. Uh, they're not, you know, organizers and doers in, in, in that sense. Um, so I think that we should reevaluate, you know, like, like, and GRC attracts incredibly like well-intentioned people who are trying to figure out what to do in the world. And if we can draw on that, that's fantastic. And that could in fact populate uh, this project. Yeah. Um, so, I, so or, part, go ahead, Judy. I was going to say that I'm, I'm going to come back to my, uh, besides being dendritic, I'm kind of on a process vector at this point, talking, trying to talk with various different groups about documentation of what you're doing, even if you don't know whether you have a process yet, because you're actually creating a process if you're not following a process. And that's a dimension that most of these organizations, um, in fact, most people don't do without someone saying, you need to do that and here's how you need to do it and so forth, because it's the documentation of how you get things done. And if you don't document it, you won't be able to do it again in another group because it'll be different people and it, you know, there's a framework there. And I think it would be a really worthy project to pull from the information that's out there in the world about project processes and formation and the different steps so that we have a coherent package of tools that we can provide to people or at least some good references that take them to some options for how to do what they're doing. Um, to build on what you're saying, Judy, uh, maybe there's another item in the project plan that is about um, process, uh, process education, process uh, mentorship, or something like that, and then right. also and, and also triple loop learning. It's a little bit like how do we bake into the plan, making the whole plan and, and all of the processes better, uh, so that we can quickly sort of iterate on this instead of sort of ironing down the first thing we do. Uh, just keep looking for better ways of doing all of the things that that this project wants to do. Um, I think that's that's going to be really important if we want implementation to be efficient. Right. And I think we're past the point of wanting and society's past the point, well past the point of needing implementation on a lot of these major issues. And so that's you can have a lot of wise people, but they don't always get work done con constructively. And another reason to document things along the way is that we're trying as much as possible to learn from one another and to reuse things, which is why Pete just pointed to a, a everything as a plan project template that you just like, you know, go copy the template and start making plans and then roll them out in that way. And then there's, there's, there's sort of an organized way to start looking at the information together. Well, there's even the option to hook different tools up as Pete has done in some places to say, you know, here's three different ways to do this check them out, one of them is probably your preference or something. Exactly. And it saves people trying to dig around with strange Google queries to find information. Exactly. So um, I, I think the ahead, next Pete. step so would be, sorry, go ahead, Judy. I was just going to say, so that actually leads me to, is there a zone of free Jerry's brain or whatever we're going to call OGM that is actually sort of tutorials and process things because there's an experiential component but there's a lot you can it, you can put a skeleton together and then you have to just do it to learn how to really do it but the the OGM wiki is starting to be that actually um, we haven't had a lot of participation in it but already it's got templates and and processes and you know patterns and things like that and the OGM Wiki wants to be a home to these things, but we don't, and we have a lot of people in OGM who are interested in learning, lots, but we have no learning focus, there's no particular learning spot, uh, there's no particular group, and there's certainly no standing call around the different aspects of learning that we're talking about here. Um, so at some point there probably will be, I just don't know exactly who. 
Go ahead, Paul. Take a look at this Foundation for Intentional Community. They have built a website that I really like, you know, and uh, when you when you go over on the resources, um, you you see videos, and here they are, they have integrated um, the they have integrated the lectures. I can mute. They have integrated the lectures uh, for which is uh, a revenue generating part. So, so the, the entire business model is basically you know, on one website and one integrated website. I mean, that is you know, one way of doing it. Looks great. Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned this on the uh, OGM call last week. Yeah, I think this, these would be great partners to work with, right? Because I think intentional communities will be an option for a lot of people uh, to uh, who lose their housing and and uh, and, and who needs uh, uh, some place to to connect with and and and, and you know, food and shelter, basically. Well, this cuts quickly into a whole bunch of other areas. Um... That are kind of sad, but there are going to be a lot of climate refugees. There are going to be a lot of displaced people because of unemployment, right. et cetera. And and if they can find their way into how to do fruitful things with the food system, that's really great. And if they can learn and sort of if they, if they can apprentice into some of the tasks that come out of this that are needed, and find their way across into communities, that's a that's employment and it's connection and it fixes things. So. I mean, every community is dealing with homelessness, right? So if you can rent a farm, if you can lease a farm, uh, farmland and, and place people on there and put them to productive use, like a kibbutz basically idea, you know, you can, I mean, that, that would be like one of many ways for a community to stabilize itself. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was unfortunately pondering that just while well, walking around early this morning because there's homeless people out there and some of whom are, are simply displaced and have no place to live. Some of whom have deep mental health issues and need, need that before they can actually participate in, in anything. Um, but trying to figure out sort of how the, what, what role those things play, I think will be important in the long run. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the uh, um, and I, I, I was I was just trying I'm just trying to build a skeleton right so that we can then uh, put uh, meat on it so to speak sorry my my uh, food uh, it's a food analogy. I think that's <laughs> yeah I think that's fine yeah so um, yeah so that that uh, so a very rough outline I mean there are several steps here that can be done simultaneously right I mean we can start working on a web page the same way, at the same time that we are developing flow charts and, and, and job descriptions and, and recruit people to jobs you now. And, uh, and I think uh, from the get-go, we should have someone on there who uh, knows how to write grants and, and uh, starts uh, searching for money. Um, and there were actually several people on the call, uh, like Kerry, for example, is very familiar with that. And, and uh, Samit, Samit is now. So we could uh, we could uh, launch that uh, right away as well. There is there is a lot of money in this space right now, searching for projects. Uh, right. Uh, there were a couple of Geeko Lab calls that were around grant writing, grant finding, all that kind of stuff. Did that produce any? Uh, did any any of us participate in any of those calls? And do we know if that produced any useful outputs? Uh, the Geeko Lab ones, or yeah, the Geeko Lab ones specifically. I, I didn't participate. Okay. So I guess we don't know. Are you saying the Elon um, Musk prize? Yeah. Yeah, I mean this is serious money now. I I think the the next step, you're right, Klaus. There's a bunch of stuff that could be done pretty quickly. Um, the next step is really understanding who's in, who's out, and how much they're in, what they're what they're going to be able to do. So maybe that's a call, uh, a founding call or something like that. Yeah, what I would suggest, um, 
is to edit the the video down to maybe you know 20 to 30 minutes or the, the i would back minutes. up from there that's a good thing to start with or to to, to do quickly I, I would back up from there um so if you look at the uh the, the folks that you've got uh core team jordan jerry p klaus and then and sumat and joshua um uh let's i i would i would convene that group and start them working right um uh ask people how much they've got to commit what they're going to be doing um so i don't we we kind of almost have quorum without without uh, jordan here um uh and i also I'm, i've been a little bit conscious that this is an ogm building ogm call and not the food sovereign call so um, I'm wondering if this is the venue for it. Well, I think we need to. I think we need to clearly build calls around around the food system. Um, but I think that by designing this process, we're building OGM a lot. So I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable anyway using our time in this way. Uh, there's other things we could maybe maybe do in the in the remaining time. But but it feels like this is a lot of progress. Um, a small side note, just um, totally reminded by Pete posting the Elon Musk X Prize for carbon capture. Um, through Salim, I ended up going to uh, the X Prize folks in LA for some meetings, and then they invited me to their big uh, annual do, where which is basically a fundraising uh, event to cough money out of uh, out of people who want to do good into projects that get brainstormed uh, through uh, a couple of days together in a fancy. And this th this whole thing was on Universal Studios lot. Uh, so it was pretty interesting. Um, and I was part of a team that had a project around regenerative agriculture that was the runner up of the contest at the end of the second day. Uh, and I wasn't on stage pitching it, but sort of at the end wished I had been because I might have done a better job of, of pitching the benefits of regenerative, all that kind of stuff, because it didn't come out, come across well a different project that wasn't as interesting one, but uh, there were a bunch of people that I might be able to remember who were like all enthused. And I think they got, uh, I'm not exactly sure what happened to that group, but I should find out. Uh, but also um, this was in the air for X prize and they're really good at getting people excited, wealthy families, you know, and, and, and getting them to donate things, uh, donate, th donate things, uh, donate money for projects like this. So, Maybe there's a, a bigger angle there, and not just not just looking at the, the must prize, but but uh, X prize as a framework. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I really separated those two also for that reason. You know, they they are um, the, the impact funds, you know, their the, the foundations. There's government grant money. USDA has put out uh, grant money for community food system development, very specifically. So, so no, an, ex, an experienced grant writer, I think, can could, could go to town with this idea. Cool. What else on this topic? Um, do you want to turn? And I think that document is now a regular Word doc, or is it, it's a Google doc, right? Yeah. Okay. So we can sort of put that someplace. Do we want to talk about the name of the project, anything like that, or is that separate brainstorming for a, a specific call? Um, what what? Uh, so I'm I'm meeting with Jordan and Anne later, and I would love to have Anne uh, launch uh, uh, a project planning exercise, and maybe she can have a work session with Pete, you know, to see how do you uh, what software do you use and. Now, what kind of format uh, do you want to go with that? And then I would say, uh, yeah, we need to make a pitch and say who, who would be in on this thing because you now we need somebody to build a website. Now, we had discussed earlier there were a couple of volunteers saying, you know, I would donate some hours of my time to build a website. So maybe we can uh, uh, get that going. Um, I, I can build, I can build a, the starter website. Oh, that'd be awesome, Pete. Um, then the organizational construct. You know, is that that's that's really um, as soon as we have a list of people willing to engage here, that would be the way to start out with. Because then we can identify what kind of talent we need uh, and and assign it. You know. 
um, yeah, so uh, then we need to make a pitch to uh, to uh, uh, people to uh, say, okay, this is serious. This has uh, this has legs, you know. Let's let's go and and uh, join and and move with it. So um, it, it sounds like your meeting with Anne and Jordan is another step. Um, so that'll be recruiting Anne, basically. We have recruited Anne. She already made a commitment. Okay. So then, uh, so then a, a, a meeting soon would be me and Anne talking about project management and project planning. Yeah, to to uh, yeah to, to to make sure it's set up in ways that uh, the software links with you know, whatever whatever other communication tools you want to integrate with it and so on. Yeah. Um, uh, how do how do we how do Anne and I end up doing that? Um, well, should I send her an email. Well, I'll let, let's wait till I met with I'll meet with her at one, and then I'll ask her to contact you. Okay, that's great. Um, I think the uh, I I think so. You've got in there organizational construct and recruiting, and I, I guess. I feel like you've already done the recruiting part, at least for the founding team. So the thing I would do is I, I think you're done recruiting more or less. And then I would do the founding part of it, which includes coming to uh, maybe let me let me say this the other way around. Um, for me to participate, I need to understand our vision and our mission. Um, and I need it to be written down and I need to have other people be able to, you know, like, yes, I'm signed up for this, too. Um, and then the next thing is we've got a founding team. Let's talk through what needs to get done and who's going to do what. And when we when we end up with an empty spot, you know, somebody needs to do X, Y, Z, and we don't have that person, then we need to figure out how to fill that. I think so. So then after that, to me, it seems like then we do more a more general call. I guess I guess to start off with, um, you've done a good job at kind of collecting people who can do some stuff. And then if we figure out what we need. What, what roles that we absolutely have to have for the next steps. I think reaching out individually probably is good enough for those. And then we do a general recruiting thing. We probably uh, need to have a, a standing call for this core team yeah. um, to, to, so we all we stay aligned and, and, uh, yeah. and we can measure our progress. Agreed. Uh, so maybe we can launch that next week. I mean, that would be awesome, uh, Jerry. Do you see? Uh, uh, do you see that any any chance to fold that into the OGM schedule? Um, we can certainly put it on the uh, on a on a common schedule. It should show up on um, Catalyst on Trove as a as a project call. So, it's it Klaus, Is that what you were asking? Or yeah, yeah. I mean, if we if we can. Uh, I don't think Jordan has uh, the organizational frame in place yet. So I have to ask him. But um, I mean, this is you now here. We can have people drop in and out who, who may be interested to listen in and and see if, if it's the right thing for them to participate and so on. Right. Um, the generative common calls on Wednesday are really interesting. Like we're having great conversations, but we're not really building the generative commons right now. Um, so I'm wondering whether to repurpose them or whatever, because because um, you know we should be flexible about how we use the, the standing calls and, and what they do. So we should maybe talk about that tomorrow on the generative comments call. Um, yeah, and see what's up. Okay. I I, I I'm a, I'm a little bit confused. Um, uh, I'm I'm thinking of the the food systems project as its own sovereign. Um, and OGM is bootstrapping it, helping it bootstrap. But I don't think of the Food Sovereign as an OGM project. Am I off base? I kind of agree with you, Pete. I think it's it has enough legs that it has a life of its own, and it's a sovereign that connects with us, draws on the wisdom of OGM per se. And if we're building a wiki that gives a lot of assistance in other operational aspects, project planning, all of those kinds of things, we're a resource to it, but we can't, I think 
it, OGM itself will bog down if we try to absorb under our umbrella all of the projects that are worthy of being worked on. So a couple of things. A, a couple of days ago, Pete and I were thinking about what is the process for using the tools, the platforms, and for migrating something from a, the germ of an idea to being a standalone sovereign project. And a piece of that flowed through like the OGM wiki. It's like, hey, here's something that, that feels like a project. And so now it lives, it gets its own directory in the wiki, which is an early stage of it. And then at some point it gets enough momentum that it's actually a, a, a sovereign standing on its own. And then it gets spun out and it builds its own either uh, massive wiki or something else, right? It, it goes onto its own, it graduates to its own infrastructure. But it feels to me like this right now is at a very comfortable phase to be hosted by OGM in its in its birth phases, which which would mean a standing call within the rhythm of the OGM community with anybody else you want to recruit to it, invite it in to, to fully participate. Meaning that it's not owned by OGM. It's not it's not an OG. It's it's OGM is helping as much as it can birth uh, a project into being a project. Um, so so I think that you know eventually if, if if grant funding comes through and then you decide to stand this up as a separate entity with with its own you know legal structure um, for that purpose, then fantastic. Then that's, we're at a different stage then. Um, and I would say at that moment, you're like out as a sovereign. So um, you, and that may differ I, from what you're thinking. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to disagree, but I disagree. Um, I don't want to disagree. Um, so I'm, I'm entirely happy to have, I, I, I want it to be, I want us to make group decisions about this kinds of thing. So for me, OGM has done a good job of incubating the food sovereign. Um, and it is now time for it to get spun out. We've reached the levels of maturity, I think. So some of the, the bellwethers for, of that for me is uh, it needs its own name. It needs its own website. It's starting to look for its own funding. Um, uh, it's working with other groups, not just OGM. So it's got GRC in the mix. It's got uh, the, the folks that we've done case clinic calls with. Um, to me, it looks like it's, I, I think we would actually be holding it back by con containing it within OGM at this point. So I, I think it's ready to go. So maybe we mean different things by the same things. To me, none of the things you just mentioned has actually happened. There hasn't been one call yet of the crew of people that Klaus mentioned in his document. None of that has actually even taken place. If we were two months down the road and those things had taken place, and there were a couple people busy writing grants and whatever, I would agree with you. And I'd be like, okay, maybe there's time right now. It seems totally premature to me right now to say, hey, go off on your own. Yeah, I, I, I think so, Pete. I think we need maybe two, three meetings um, uh, that uh, at least, you know, that allow us to consolidate this whole thing a little bit more. And figure out who's, actually, who's actually on board. Yeah, we don't even have a name, right? So, so. I'm going to start working on this mission statement. I already put myself a note, mission vision. Right? So, so there is, a, there is, and, and we need to, um, we need to uh, modify this video so we can send it around for people to you know, to process what what we're trying to do, but condensed. Um, yeah, and then then I can see this spin off really fast. But I think we need uh, you not know, just a few more episodes. Okay. Part of the um, beauty um, of of having, I mean, my sense is that every organism keeps growing. And in, if we want to mine the richness of the diversity of the organisms that are growing and the initiatives that are forming and the groups that will grow to be bigger sovereigns and might become huge sovereigns, and certainly regenerative agriculture and food economy could become global in scope and so big that we'd be a subset of it because we're providing knowledge. Um, it's just one of those things where I think that if we hold groups, we want to provide the right level of support to enable them to become independent and, and be sure that we're on the vector toward independence, not toward compliance with what we're seeing as a framework with our particular vision because that would be a hindering of the potential richness of diversity of tools and processes and knowledge and information. I also think that o OGM and its numbers of people would get rapidly overwhelmed with the amount of work to keep track of. And so not, that's something I don't, that I, I don't think- know what you, Yeah, what do you mean by that, Judy? Just specifically that part. 
Because right now, we don't have a dashboard where we see how much work there is. This would just be another call on the schedule that people could show up for. Uh, they would only be seeing the activity if they went into the channel on Mattermost on, intentionally. Like this would not flood any of our systems at this point that I can tell. Maybe I'm just looking at it from a little different point of view, but I, I think that, that there's real value in allowing independence as early as possible so that the growth of the diverse viewpoint is, is fostered. And maybe we're just saying the same thing. And if we're talking about you know, a few weeks of timing, I wouldn't quibble about it, but if it's going to turn into six months or something that's much longer, then I think there may be unconscious constraints on the independence of that group that would be worrisome for me. So I think this is actually, I know I'm realizing I only have three minutes here because I have to be on another call at the top of the hour. I apologize. I think this is an important conversation and it's a very build OGM conversation that we've ended up in. Um, and just to borrow from nature, you don't push the bird out of the nest before it's even hatched. You don't even push it out before it's fledged because it has to practice flying and then it goes and then it's a little bird and then it's off on its own and woohoo. Um, and OGM as it's holding an entity has no desire to own it long-term, to appropriate it or whatever. And we're busy trying to form our own norms and practices to figure out how OGM works and what o being OGM even means. And that's not even very well formed at this point. But in the spirit of that, if Klaus likes the way we're going about doing the work and is happy with our hosting, then he's completely welcome to like attach himself to whatever it is we know how to do and can do well until like their flight feathers have shown up and there's some ability to go like go wherever. And then be free, be free little bird, because then he's actually able to fly. Um, but I'm, I'm confused about what we mean together about when something is a sovereign and what the drawbacks are of being held, is it too, I don't know that OGM is gonna suffocate the entity. I, I don't know what you, both of you are worried about, about a few months going by where all the moving parts get in place. We figure out who the team actually is. They figure out which path they want to take, et cetera, et cetera. And then off we go. As long as we can keep those conversations from flooding over into the general channels, et cetera, et cetera, which I just don't, don't see happening if we do this you know, reasonably intelligently. I, I could talk into those questions, um, but I don't think it's worth it. I think we should, uh, especially since we've got uh, uh, Klaus and, and Jerry agreed, that it makes sense to at least keep going with a, a, within OGM for a while longer. Yeah, and, and talking about how long, I mean, we, if we don't succeed in building momentum, this thing will die, right? I mean, once, because people will just get distracted and if there's too much time passing, they move on to something else. I mean, you have to capture the interest and capture the imagination of people who will say, yeah, this is something and then and it, it has to really move. Uh, and so, I mean, in three, four weeks, we have to be in a completely different place. If, if you know, to pull that, to pull that off. So let's sync up after you've talked with Anne, and just uh, we can do an async in the in the food channel on Mattermost, or we can have another call or something like that. But let's figure out where you've gotten to with Jordan and Anne, uh, and then see what other pieces of this need to get factored in. And we could start a a folder on them. OGM wiki for the food system, uh, and we can put the document you just created into a do into a, a markdown document in there. That would be easy to do, Pete. Um, and so we can start you off with a place to to share documents and start you know, using our tools if that's what you'd like to do. But we can easily set that up, um, and that'll be a start. Yeah, that would be an awesome resource to work with. You bet. Cool. Okay, and we've got a little bit side bookmark the conversation to have about when something is old enough to be a sovereign and what it means to be a sovereign and all that kind of stuff, but we can hold that uh, at the, for the moment. And I must, I must the last bolt. So thank I'm you. I'm not very much. sure that it, it I, I don't know how to explain what I'm feeling about it. Um, I think that I'm not altogether sure I'm even a big fan of the term sovereign as a label, but it's one that we seem to have come upon by a convention. But I think that that in the interest of both productivity and creativity, the freedom to move independently is very important. And so 
my concern would be that in keeping us informed or doing whatever the sort of connect back to mother things are, we might in unconsciously inhibit the independence and full maturation and development of a, of I, a group. I, I agree, and I think we already are, um, which is where I am, but we can talk about that later. Okay. Um, cool, let's, <laughs> let's dissolve this call and uh, continue this later, thanks. Thanks all. Bye. Good call. All right.